my slide now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We are live now, sir. Sorry. Ortho TV wants to let us know that we are live now. Okay. <laughs> Let's check. This is the same one which I presented. No, I think this is this has some different one. I am sorry. Uh, just two seconds, I'll. Yes, sir. <clears throat> So thank you, Ortho TV. Today we have a good, very good, uh, different, different topics for discussion. Dr. Tanna sir will be taking us through the use of drainage tubes, the current status, his previous philosophies, and the current state of art in draining the wounds. And after that, uh, Sangeet, if he is joining, he'll be taking us through radiation prevention in theater, especially from the CM radiation. And we have a wonderful talk by Siddharth Malani. He happens to be an a engineer at Nagpur, very well thoroughly read about the processes of hospital, especially the, uh, the autoclaving process and why the wet linen is there, why the autoclaving signals do not change, the, the uh, type 1 to type 6 uh, we use for checking the autoclaving process. So that could be very, very interesting topic and uh, there will be a lot of questions i suppose from all of you so be ready for listening to auto playing yes. who do attend they will have a fist and a, also the shocking experience of a true orthopedics okay i start here this is a typical moscow red square drainage tube is not a substitute for a good hemostasis used to drain blood which might collect after a good hemostatic closure. This is how the drainage tube came. Park and Stinchfield published the first article describing the use of a closed suction drainage for orthopedic procedures in 1961. Safety protocol in OT after putting drain at the end of a surgery before the dressing confirm whether the drain is active by creating negative pressure and see if the some blood comes in the tube. May not be in the container to confirm there is no kink in the tube and this is functional. This is most often forgotten. When you put the tube, you see that it is working. If there is no blood in the connecting tube also means there is the blockage of the tube somewhere. Now correct this. Block connecting and the charge bottle. If there is no leak, Bottle is okay. Something is in the tube. Mainly it is the drainage tube in the wound is kinked. So it has to come out partially and then you will get it. This is how the small kink is there. Or one of the holes is already out and then you will get the tube is not functioning. Clamping the drainage. Now there is a system which has been described that clamp the drainage tube in the first four hours after TKR can temporarily recreate a tamponade effect for the bleeding control. The article which has been there, non-drainage is better than four-hour clamping drainage in a total knee. Drains, if it becomes occluded or clogged, resulting in retained fluid that can contribute to infection or other complications. So if it is blocked, do not flush out to open it. Just remove it. Because if it is blocked, you flush it out, you are introducing infection. The optimal time to remove the drains after a total joint arthroplasty or any trauma surgery is 24 hours and maximum is 48 hours. Generally, 48 hours when the drain stops to 30 to 40 cc in the 24 hours. I have days when third day drain recorded in the 50 cc. And now what do I do? Out of fear of infection, which is higher after drain for more than 48 hours, I remove the drain even if the last drain was 50 cc and nothing happened. Next day or the next month. So I feel it is not safe to put, keep the drain for 48 hours even if it is draining. Drain maintenance routine. RMO is a big boss in the setup after the surgeon leaves. He feels it is below his dignity to manage the drain. 
junior most nurse is asked to measure the blood in the tray. Junior nurse opens the bottle, pours out the blood in the container, which is also used to measure the urine output. Common scenario I have observed is, and she writes it down on the tray, connects the bottle back, generally doesn't charge it back, as probably she doesn't know even how to charge. Big boss Aremo comes for a round just before entering OT, where he is late. Hi, how, how, how are you? And he leaves. He doesn't see even the bottle where he's charged or no. This is the commonest thing which I have observed. When I go for a round, I see the bottle, whether it is charged or no. Most of the time on second day, the bottle is not charged after the drain is removed. Now the drain is connected, but not charged. And surgeon arrives. He is told by the nurse, drain is not working when asked. Surgeon around on day one and day two, what is orthopedic round? Only a social hello. Spends time with relatives socially to justify fat fees he has charged. Next day around, same. Thus says there is no drain as it was not charged. So the tube is removed as the drain is stopped. Nothing happens as there was. Also the drain was not really required. Now, innoxious removal of suction drains. Culture of the suction fluid or tip of the suction tube has no value. That is what was recommended at, at one time, which it has no value. To diminish pain, injection of a lignocaine in the tube before removal is also suggested. I fear to introduce infection by this. I never do it. I just take it out while the patient does. Ah, oh. Although the clamping drainage was superior to the conventional drainage according to the previous literature, we found no advantage of using this method compared with non-drainage. Thus, we do not recommend the routine use of the drainage in TKR. Removal of the drain if it doesn't come out easily. On second or third day, the remove the tube by gently pulling it out, not yanking it out if it doesn't come out. Junior most ignorant house surgeon at times yanks it out, outer portion of the stuck tube. If it doesn't realize that the patient, that it is only half the tube has come, patient goes home with half the portion of this tube inside. I have removed such two tubes in 12 to 15 years after the surgery at a revision hips. Patient didn't realize it was in and was asymptomatic. This is not desirable. Good house surgeon realize the stuck tube. Now you need to open the, if the tube is stuck and it doesn't come out, don't do anything. Tell a senior that it is not coming out. Now the protocol for that is, now you need to open the wound to remove this tube. The x-ray went in doubt whether any retained tube is Okay. In tube, you can see it very well. Okay. 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 Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Hello, Susan. Somebody close the tube. Close the drainage tube and close the wound now. Now you know the tube is not stuck. Now, if this is the one which you have to just see it regularly, keep the tube out, see that it is sliding. Now you cut off the end. Again, I'm showing this because this is the precaution you have to take. And now close the wood after taking it out a little more. Now, the other thing which I'm going to tell you is now, if the tube is stuck, what do you do? Generally, we open it up. But here are the two methods which I want to talk about. This is why Shiv Shankar has devised this. He is putting this K wire in. He is putting the K wire in and the, and the stitch which has come on the tube, he is trying to break it out. So now it has come out, you can see. This is the beautiful way Dr. Shiv Shankar did this. 
and this is how it is. Now here is the second method. You put in this small instrument, push it around, hold the tube because the tube otherwise will go in with it. Hold the tube, push it in. This will also, what it will do is, wherever the stitch is holding, it will cut the stitch and the tube will come out. And then at the end of it, the tube comes out. So the tube has come out. These are the two ways in which you can remove the stuck tube. Why the hell go through this exercise or drainage tube? Can you see my slide? Because I get the message, the internet is not good. Can you see yes, my slide? Yes, yes, we are seeing. Okay. Literature on the drainage tube is against using it. Now I'm coming, I'm giving you a shock to all of you. Please understand. Close suction drainage in a hip fractures. Review the meta analysis random trial. A previous systematic review of random trial on drains of all types of orthopedic on 464 participants. Wound drainage could not be shown to have any effect on wound healing complications, but did result in increase in requirement of the blood transfusion. Cochrane review. For other types of Slides are not moving. Slide is not moving. Sir, you also showed failure of such studies to demonstrate any benefit for the closed suction drainage system for any type of surgery, whether the drain used or not Excuse used. Sir. Excuse me, sir. Now However, the slides where closed drainage used needed more blood trap. Slides are stuck now. Fusion. Other review. Three-hour interval drain clamping reduces post-operative bleeding in total recovery by acting as an anchor, limiting mobility post-surgery. And the drain... Are, are you seeing the slide, TKR? No, no, three no, hour no, 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 no. Now it is stuck up. Now it is stuck up. Last tube is on uh, removal of the stuck tube. The issue is solved. Okay. Are you seeing this slide? No, sir. No, not yet. No. Last slide on start to how to manage second method, sir. Sorry, I have to go, go, go back and re, re come. Dr. Yes. Chandak, can you just take something in between? Yes, sir, I can start. No problem. I'll share my screen. I stop sharing. Yes. Nitin, you are able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are able to see. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, my talk would be on my favorite instruments and accessories in uh, our inventory, which are routinely useful and certain small philosophies about uh, instrument. So as you all know, instruments in orthopedic surgeries are required for one, number one is general exposure, our debridement, which is a very key thing in managing uh, compound fractures, retraction, closure of wound, traction, then bone exposure, drilling, reaming, cutting metal or bone, 
so let us see certain key instruments for various named procedures so what is most important is planning and instrument handling this requires a dedicated job either we do it ourselves as in the initial uh, days of practice or we define what we want or we delegate that job uh, that job and that should be very specifically done so that we know what we need at that particular time we all have instruments in our armamentarium but there are certain instruments which help create a good surgery or the artistic way of surgery a good general dissection set is essential for a efficient surgery pay attention to it and a efficient retractor also is very important now what i mean by a good general set we need various different types of needle holder say for example this is a four part fracture a proximal surgical neck humerus and when we want to take a ethibond stitch into one of the cuff especially the greater tuberosity tuberosity and the cuff attached as you would have noticed the needle tries to turn around when you are holding with a needle holder and in this situation i would like to use a needle holder which is flat top which is wide so that the needle doesn't turn around and that is very very useful in this setup we got this simple right angles in a general set and as you see this right angle the terminal tip is important at what angle it should be you need different different type many times we call sisters that just change my right angle without knowing exactly why you want to change it so pay attention to what you purchase when you are purchasing also look pay attention to this typical right angle retractor which i commonly use for a uh, reaming uh, sequence where you want to push the reamer inside and don't want to allow it to laterally ream out self retaining retractors also make our task very easy and i like to use a bunch of this valpis retractor which makes the things very clear and at times apart from right angle retractor a obtuse angle retractor is also very useful when you want to retract a corner at an angle so i have two or three of this obtuse angle so it is not at right angle it is at obtuse angle this also is very useful a deep very narrow right angle retractor is very useful for terrible tract surgery as you can see here this is a very narrow but a deep right angle and this is very useful when you want to see that small piece of coronoid in front of the terrible tract space is not available and this retractor a very small sleek right angle retractor is very useful so that you get enough space there and you can see uh, the tissues on the small piece of coronoid any question so far you are able to listen and see these slides yes sir so there is so yeah okay. <clears throat> so this is what that right angle retractor in our theater we call it as a terrible triad retractor because most commonly used there but it is very useful in deep dissections of posterior popliteal fossa also in terrible triad wherever you want to use into a narrow zone and you want to retract deep also the light travels better when you retract deep what is the length sir is the horizontal length so yeah. you can see Yeah, you can see this. Five centimeter. You can see the blade and the knife, which that you can uh, make us. So this is approximately of three different lengths. So this is of this blade length. We can compare it here. Ah, uh, it equals my finger, index finger, and there are two or three of different uh, shapes and sizes. So routinely we have broad right angle retractor, but if you have narrow, so very particularly useful in. Deep retraction, something like sinus tarsi, and uh, terrible triad. There it becomes very useful. <clears throat> of course, you can manage with anything, with whatever we have. Um, a long sleeve and obtuse angle retractor is also very useful. And these long sleeves are very useful. Say, for example, in uh, deep dissections of the sciatic nerve or uh, cocker lang uh, Langenbeck approach. or wherever you want to put a bone fragment so keep a long sleeve on it and then you can pin it with a k wire in a deeper tissues the tissues would not entangle 
even in popliteal fossa, in deep dissections of hip, anterior dissections of hip. So, couple of these sleeves, which would accommodate two 2.5-3 mm stemming pin or K wires, or at times can also accommodate a <coughs> different other instrument, is also very useful. Um, when you buy retractors, there are certain inputs uh, in these retractors. We want them for either strength, a pointed tip is also useful. If, for example, you want to use very delicately at the distal end radius or uh, in a forearm surgery. Uh, this hollow at the back equals 13 mm. So this also is very useful for putting your retractors uh, sliding in to avoid lateral limbing of the proximal femoral entry point. A uh, large bone lever avoids fatigue and a very long spike. So pick up one of these in the stalls and this is very useful to give you a retraction uh, where you want specifically when this peak of the proximal femur tries to jump anteriorly, then you try to bring it down and this becomes very useful in that situation. Distraction is also commonly required in orthopedic surgery and this requires, this leads to proper restoration of angles and anatomical parameters like in subtalar joint <coughs> for a calcaneus fracture. So have a couple of these deep tissue retractors which you can retract by either 2 mm or 2.5 mm KY. And this across orthrodesis, uh, deep tissue retraction, tibial plafond fracture, this is very, very useful. And then once you retract, you can actually um, decorticate and skeletonize the bones so that you can go for either fusion, etc. A distractor and a punch <coughs> are very useful ally. So when you do a tibial varus correction after a malunited tibial condyle surgery, so you have these lamina spreaders, thin blade lamina spreaders, and then you can have of the shape of the bone graft. So I got this made specifically so that that graft sits in very nicely during the full correction. Drilling is something which also is the core of our orthopedic service and uh, a good drill, whatever uh, you want to use. Look at three important things. One is RPM, number two is the uh, torque and number three is the precision. When a K-wire is put very nicely locked into the chuck, it should rotate and it should not make revolutions. It should only move on its own axis because otherwise a simple drill bit of 2.5 can create a hole of even 3, 3.5. So always keep on looking toward the drill function. And the cleaning and maintenance of drill also requires certain inputs. And a very easy way is the dental surgeon's <coughs> air pressurizing machine, which cleans the drill drives out all the water through it so that your sterilization is perfect. Never ever dip all these chucks into a saline water. And that's a very important thing. When you dip the chucks into a saline or an NACL solution, <clears throat> the sodium crystallizes and this crystallization leads to jamming of the chuck and uh, that leads to a uh, problem. So pour uh, running water or you can use the simple Autoclave water, whatever you want to use, but avoid using saline for this function. Uh, uh, when you use a drill with a large hose, as was my practice when I began my practice, but they were very uncomfortable. The first drills we use is uh, low price drills, but then quickly we move to either electrical system or a cordless system. And now most often we use, most of us would be using a battery operated system. But these become very cumbersome. Pneumatic drilling system um, again requires a lot of space and maintenance and it requires space on the trolley so that one of the corners of the trolley you need to keep separated out for drilling. So now my current philosophy is to use a good drilling system, one for torque and one for <coughs> prehensile function or very precision drilling. So two drills you need, one for torque and power and where you don't get stuck up to the rimmer and the other for precision. A good drilling and rimming is an orthopedic delight. Uh, so don't miss it. It's a stress buster in theater. So I would always have <coughs> these rimmers. These are all single rimmers. And those who have not seen these rimmers, these are uh, sentinel rimmers from Zima. 
and uh, striker rimmers. They are all single piece rimmers and <clears throat> they are very, very useful in good rimming. And good rimming itself improves your uh, union rate in fractures because you draw out a lot of this pulverized bone from the bone marrow. Uh, this is a delight for distal interlock, though costly, but it is worth it. And as you see, this is a dual bit. This is available in all three sizes required for the interlocking distal hole. So as you can see, the tip is like a K-wire. And as you must have noticed, when we do a distal interlocking, the drill slips from the point where we take a bullseye. So it is, the, you put it at the center point, but as soon as you start moving it, it changes the position. So this drill bit is the distal interlock specific drill bit. Try to have one of them and it is very, very useful. <clears throat> Entry point instruments, are, I think we had already discussed one time, but suffice to say that you need to have different one, curve, straight one, then this corrugated, hexagonal, so that you have different requirements. To me, the best of the lot is one which has a sharp end point. They can cut and also give you a chance to pass a guide wire through them. Uh, the current TFNA guide wire and TFNA angled out is my favorite. A perfect entry point selection. Uh, you can have this simple double sleeve so that you can change your entry point by 3 millimeter. And these are my favorite instruments whenever entry point I want to change. See, for this small thing, a uh, spike is holding the anterior beak which is coming out and my guide wire is here. Now, if I keep on changing and shooting again and again with the image intensifier, so that could be a lot of radiation. So what I do, I use either 3 mm separation or 6 mm separation. So once I take this 3 mm or 6 mm separation, then I can I can um, shift it whatever way I want it. And that gives a very, very specific, precise entry point. This is what I mean in difficult situation. You can change it whatever way amount you want to change. So have one of them and that is very useful. The entry owl from Synthes to me works the best. It has good serrating points on the sides, all four edges, and it can cut up to this point. So not only the entry point, even the entry path also is very nicely made by this. And it's not very costly though from Synthes, but it is quite affordable. This right angle we discussed avoids lateralization of the entry portal and you can look at it. It is on a guide wire and you keep on shifting it medially so that the portal lateralization does not happen routinely as commonly it happens, which you can also do by one of your Shahid bone levers, cut it the back part of that and the same piece does the retraction effect. So you can do by this simple maneuver also. So the reamer is held in position it takes the bite just medial, keep it pressed inside so that it avoids. Uh, I suppose I'm clear and that's a very, very useful instrument to use. Uh, this right angle or a um, broken lever and a small C retractor into the neck gives me a precise positioning of guide wire, precise positioning of the fracture zone when it is a difficult reduction. So I can pull it from this side. If there is a stuck up bone at this point, that also comes out with this C retractor. And you know how to place this C retractor? It is easy. You can pass out from this point, just go anterior and pick it out. So, this also becomes very useful. Thing. Play safe using long protection C. We just discussed this out. These are the entry pole selectors. This is 5 mm shift of entry point, and then you can select it accordingly. So, you can shift it medially, you can shift it anteriorly. You can shift it posteriorly. Guide wire directional change also is a very useful uh, tool, and you can you can change it uh, when required. Just some time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a guide, guide wire directional chain. Thanks to Dr. MC, he provided me with this instrument. This is very simple. 
what he did was he used and choose two nails bend them so that when the guidewire tries to go medially continuously you can use this or the available devices costa finder which you can use to change the guidewire direction uh, many times we need meshmark bandages a large meshmark bandage roll is available you have to make it specifically available so that in one go you can examine the whole limb a very ergonomic design of punches uh and the trajectory design and i like all of them for the elevation of the cable condyler uh, depressed fragments and you need various different size shape and the foot the footprint of all of them is a bit different so according to the requirement you can change these punches many times in orthopedics we need good compression devices and you can use couple of them so i have different of these types which are all available so right angle one goes with the forward going tip a uh, point reduction clamps and ohm clamp so all of them help you get the right compression across the fracture site in close nailing this is my favorite instrument so this is a pointed clamp this to me from the eo is the best one and it is priced for money um you have uh, <clears throat> a very precise it doesn't leave this place once you bite it onto the cortex and you are doing your maneuver and hammering the nail etc guiding the nail it doesn't fall off it stays in position this parrot beak clamp is a special clamp which has a short limb and a longer limb so this gives you a good reductional ability so whenever this beak is coming out you can hold this rightly and clamp it back into position when choosing femur clamps look for thinness of blade and labia aspera penetration so so the clamps which have a thick blade is very difficult to pass in so they should have a tip which is bit sharper so look at these fine tips and then you can penetrate them through the linea aspera or the tough intermuscular septums so also look for this adequate opening of the clamps so that your larger bone also you can hold and self adjusting clamp attachment this makes your life easier when you are doing a difficult reduction a syndesmosis clamp also is a very useful thing whether to use it or not to use is different philosophies the concepts keep on changing but when you are required to clamp it and give pressure onto the syndesmosis the best way would be to put one of this prongs on to a screw head and on the other side be anti gravity again a useful thing when you want to compress if it is coming by itself that's a fine thing point reduction clamp so this becomes a automatic biological way of clamping the bone and again is very useful to to make your reduction very efficient without disturbing the bone this is what i call it as a point reduction it's something like a weather clamp but a very small foot hold the footing is very small so i have couple of them in my all sets and the reduction becomes quite easier uh, extraction whenever we want to do or uh, it's a very difficult pursuit you may need different extractors so one set always kept protocleved in theater is a very very useful thing as dr tanna usually does most of his instruments are kept protocleved ready you don't know what instrument would be needed at what time and keeping them autoclaved at every moment of time is very useful you may need different types uh, whatever the nail is difficult extraction devices the easy out devices as they are known out known easy out devices are also very very useful and as we have seen on the group a lot of surgeons have removed broken nails etc dr patti presented this case where he removed the small tip of the broken nail so this easy out devices of different calibers are also very important when choosing t handles uh, a t handle with a wide large opening is required at times and then precision t handles you can choose any one of them um, at times a good plate bending is required for different purposes and a set of plate benders especially when you want to blend them according to this plane or a plate bending into the profile is is also very useful too. i would stop at this point and if there are any questions uh, we will take up the questions uh, 
any any questions yes, yeah. very 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 practical instrumentation very yeah. very practical yeah. thank you thank you, you so much you are always stuck up during the surgery because of the want of proper instruments yes. i have seen i have faced it many times sir yes so uh, this is already 8:42 dr mal uh, mr malani would be joining at 9 pm and i hope tanna uh, sir must be back uh, his net was not audible at that time tanna sir is there we can pick up uh, sir is there any implants uh, um, uh, would like to show us uh, implant removal uh, things like head, yeah. broken head screws like such things yeah i'll i'll show uh, after some time because uh, 9 pm we are given for uh, uh, mr malani for autoclaving so we have five ten minutes of discussion i think dr tanna sir uh, is here uh, he was showing his ppt on venous tube etc where you know, we have stopped because tanna sir i think he is only jo joined and then i'll be taking again i'll right. show that uh, instruments for broken screw head uh, removal yes any other question on this instrument is uh, yeah go ahead rakesh any plate holding instrument in which place we can put a plate and like sometimes we find difficulty in uh, finding yeah so i tried, uh, yeah i i try to do various different instruments so uh, there are certain unique instruments i'll i'll get the photographs of those instrument and they are there in my other laptop and i'll show you so what you need is one once you put one screw on one of the side the other side of the plate you need a footprint of a uh, clamp which is very minimalistic you don't want to uproot all the muscles on the opposite side so i'll show that yes. clamp yeah on stalls we see lot of these clamps but but all of them have large uh, foothold which which unnecessarily damages the muscle so we need a very small foothold uh, clamp <coughs> Yeah. So, sir, you you yeah. talked about the pointed bone holding clamp in the femur. Yes. To push through the linea aspera, is yeah. it so so sharp to not to require a cut in the linea aspera to pass beneath uh, the below the yeah. shaft femur? Yeah, yeah, that is my favorite uh, clamp. That is quadman clamp, and quadman clamp doesn't require because it easily goes. Uh, it has a very sliding beak, so it, it just passes through. Or another good tip is. take one bone spike or a bone lever as we call in our theater so use a bone spike and just hammer the bone spike very flush to bone uh, in a in a concave way and then you pass your clamp that's a very useful tip mm. because many times we you feel that when you are passing even a uh, ss wire passer that even yes. doesn't penetrate yeah. through the linea aspera and then you yeah. have to take a mild incision or what you are told just now uh, hammering so, the so 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 yeah. pass the bone spike or pass a homan and then pass your uh, uh, sacral wire pass that becomes that very easy that should be done done very delicately for a newcomer yes yes too much deep very, inside it yes very, very close to bone very very uh, in a in a concave manner very close to bone yes uh, hugging the bone hugging the bone yes absolutely sir how to do that femoral destructor uh, So your question is how to use the femoral distractor? Yes. Yes. Okay. Working on update thi chal raha hai. आप इसपे चालू रखो अभी। So I'll 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 put the slides of femoral distractor. Definitely. Huh? I'll take up in part two. I'll I'll keep that femoral distractor ready. Welcome, Sangeet. Good evening, sir. Good. Good evening, Nagi sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So, Sangeet, you are going to take up uh, the radiation hazard today, uh, sir. I'll take about forty-five minutes to reach home. Uh, okay. Not before that, forty forty-five okay. minutes. I've just so, joined. No. So no, no problem. Uh, at nine p.m., we have given space to Dr. Malani for autoclaving and his presentation. So, so if I, uh, a time permits after that, yes, okay, that's fine. इसमें लगा दूँ क्या जब तक? Absolutely. Siddha, you are fine. इसको बंद कर दूँ, बंद दूँ. Tanna sir, Tanna sir is joined back, so he can complete his presentation, and that nine we 
टेक अप मालूम इस प्रेजेंटेशन ये अब चालू हो जाएगा ठीक है ठीक है क्लीनिंग अब चल रहा है जो भी चल रहा है टॉपिक आर ऑर्ड टूडे यस ऑल द टॉपिक they 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 are they are not bones they are apa away from bones i think last i showed was this slide right yes sir yes sir yes yes sir so now why the hell go through this exercise of drainage tube literature on the drainage tube is wound drains could not be shown to have any effect on the wound healing complication but this resulted yeah, yeah, yeah. in the effect of blood transfusion Second, Cochrane report failure of such studies to demonstrate any benefit of closed suction drainage system for any type of surgery. So all the literature is against using drainage tube. Three hundred TK are no different in range of movements whether the drain used or not used. However, where the closed drain was used, it had more transfusions. It is felt now that the drains may hinder recovery by acting as an anchor. Limiting the mobility in post-surgery and drain itself may allow infection in the wound. In the second survey, the question now the, this is a very interesting thing. First survey, they told the, all the surgeons that this is the literature about the drainage tube and it is not needed to be used and it is contraindicated. Then they went did a second surgery survey. The second survey, they questioned the surgeons about the reasons for drainage tube. Finally, they presented the literature regarding against drainage tube usage in the surgeon survey. After being presented with the data that demonstrated no benefit to drain use, they found that majority of the surgeons did not change their practice. They continue to use the drainage tube, despite the paucity of clinical evidence demonstrating any benefit supporting their use. Drains continue to be placed. After effective orthopedic surgery. So, in conclusion, after preparing this talk, I stopped using drains. Truth is, I almost stopped using drains because still today, in spite of the fact that I know this and I have spoken about it in the revision surgery, at times, so probably up two percent or five percent of the times, I use drainage tube very reluctantly. Thank you. Any questions on this before we go ahead with Dr. Sangeet or Dr. or Mr. Malani, whatever is being decided. Sir, may I? Yes, yes. Sir, sir, if blood is there, then uh, then it can cause infection. Is there any chance? The as I say, the, the whole literature on the drainage tube is very very clear. If you keep the blood and if it is been removed by the drainage tube. First and the foremost, you do the hemostasis. There's the reason, as I mentioned, in a revision surgery, where at times it is not easy to stop hemostasis, you may go on getting small oozing. But it has been shown that you change the dressing on the night where you are operated upon, because there will be some soakage of the wound on the on the night which you operated, and otherwise it will not create any problem at all. And as I said, up three years back or four years back, I read this in from a con, and ever since then, I have not used the drainage tube. Sir, so when, so when we are doing dressing next day, or should we press the wound to squeeze the blood, or no? Not required. Sir, not required. excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, do you use any Trenexa injection or hemostatic uh, any injection or local or IV? You pause majority of the times in joints and hips, and at times in a trauma surgery. Pause, which is given in trauma, end of the surgery, and for three days orally. I've seen that sometime after knee replacement or something. There is a whose collection uh, supra patellar, so we need to aspirate it. So, um, what 
sometimes I use the drain uh, in some cases. See what is recommended in the knee surgery? You remove the tunicate, close all the bladders because they in, in the bones have already been sealed. So once you remove the tunicate, close all the bladders, then it has been universally shown by all the results that the drainage tube is of no use. But as I said, still it is being used again and again by quite a lot of people. Okay. Today, Sir, may I? today's thing is no, uh, in case of, sir. no drainage tube. Yes. Hello. Uh, sir, in case of uh, knee yes. joint opening in supracondylar femoral nail or suprapatellar nail, then there is rumor of spit collected in the knee. No, I... The drain for one or two I days, uh, post of helps in removing the things, rumor of I can understand the rationale of. Uh... That's what I'm saying. I can understand the rationale of drainage tube in such situations. Okay. Sangeet, can you take over? Uh, sir, I'm I have not Malani. reached home. Yeah. He, he's scheduled at 9 o'clock. I think Mr. Malani can, can take over. No problem. Yes, Mr. Malani, yeah. thank you yes. very much for joining us. Please, all the, all, every, please carry on. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, thank you, Tana, sir. Uh, thank you, Rajendra Chandrat, sir, for actually giving me an opportunity. Now, most of the times you have called me Dr. Malani. I am an engineer, Malani, and I am speaking in front of the doctors today. I feel happy about that. There are very few times that engineers actually get an opportunity to talk to doctors or probably challenge them for a few things. Uh, the session that we have is regarding CSSD. I'll just like to share my screen. I just have to see if you are able to see or not. Uh, just a no, second. Tanna sir has to unshare his screen. Right. Sir, if you could just unshare the screen once. Thank you. Are you able to see the screen? Yes. All right. So the yes, session sir. is, yeah. Hello. Uh, and am I audible properly? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. So uh, the basic objectives today are understanding the layouting of a CSSD. CSSD stands for uh, Central Sterile, uh, Sterile Services Department. We'll talk about a couple of zoning requirements which are required in any CSSD, be it small or big. Whether it is for 10 bed or 100 bed doesn't make a difference. Uh, there are several types of sterilization, the importance of pre-vacuum autoclaves, that is what we'll see. The monitoring and validation using a couple of indicators, the right packaging options, and a simple statement, a few things, a few slides about cost of upgradation in a CSSD. Now, antibiotics have been used pretty well. Now, I won't say that it is wrong or it is not even my, uh, you know, it's not my base to say anything regarding the antibiotics, but we have seen when doctors, a lot of doctors say that they have had no infection in past several years. Now, the reason could be many. It's like probable that an infection was there because of lack of autoclaving or sterilization and it was suppressed because of an antibiotic. So basically what we have to see is prevention of an infection completely versus fighting an evident infection. The infection can be reduced if you have good protocols inside your CSSD sterilization departments. The CSSD basically has to get into a three demarcated zone. There are three different areas. One is basically decontamination, the red part that you see, just the dirty area where the washing is going to happen. The second one is the packing area where all the items which are required, the drums are going to be made, the trays are going to be made, they are going to be packed along with indicators, they are going to be placed inside an autoclave. And the third one is basically the sterilization zone, where the actual sterilization happens, the material comes out and it is stored in this area. It has to be a uniflow diagram where things start moving from one direction, go towards the other direction. 
it is not allowed to move back in the direction at all. So in a dirty zone, you will have receiving of the dirty item, items. There's going to be washing. There's going to be ultrasonic cleaning and drying. Next is the packing zone where inspection happens, labeling happens, and autoclave is also there inside the zone only. If you have a double door autoclave, it will open up in the sterile area. Sterile zone is the area where unloading of the sterile items will happen. It has to be under temperature and humidity control. And then the dispatch of the items will ideally happen via a pass box. So see, it is not required to have extremely big areas for CSSD. We have seen at least in the places where we're operating in Nagpur, most of the people have CSSDs on the terraces or they have the CSSD near to their operation theaters. What happens is if it is near the operation theaters, it is going to be called a TSSU. That is a theatrical surgical sterile unit. That is where the most of the items are going to get sterilized and are going to be used inside your OTs. But recently what has happened is lot of sterilization needs to be done even in ICU ward and other areas. For example, tracheostomy trays, ward trays, any of the dressing trays, sterilization needs to be done even for those trays. And that's why it is better to have a central sterile area, which is different from all these areas. So that in that particular area, you can have an ETO, you can have a, a cleaning protocol, you can have packing, sterile zone, everything at one place. So this is just a sample of a couple of layouts that we have done, say in 20 feet by 10 feet also, we have had a good CSSD with three or four demarcated areas. In 13 feet by 14 feet also, we can make a good CSSD. So you see area as such a minimum area, if you are going, going to give us say 10 feet to 15 feet, that is fairly sufficient for a good working CSSD with complete protocols. Just for example, we have an entry over here to the dirty wash area. Then you have the packing zone. Then you have the autoclave area. Material comes out of the autoclave, goes into the sterile area via dispatch, via pass box. It goes to the final areas. What is basically a dirty zone in CSSD? This is the place where most of the washing is going to happen, where you're going to use the detergents, enzyme solutions, cleaning brushes, the compressed air that we are talking about, as Rajendra sir had told some time back, he is using a compressed air gun, what a dental person uses for uh, draining out excess water from chucks or from your uh, drills. So this is what happens inside the dirty zone. It has to be a clean area. There has to be good exhaust over there because when you are using detergents, lot of aerosols are going to get generated, which are harmful for you as well as the person. You need to have a couple of deep washing sinks, double wash sinks, where one is the place where the rinsing is done, the other one where cleaning is done or immersion is done. You use a couple of cleaning brushes and you also use an ultrasonic cleaner, which is a fantastic uh, machine for vascular or any kind of fine instruments that you're going to have. It helps in deep cleaning of the instruments without you having to manually clean the instruments with brush. So this is an additional step of 30, 35 minutes that gets involved, but it is going to give long life to your expensive instruments. Uh, precautions which are required, PPE kit has to be worn by your staff. Now, right now, if your staff is wearing a face mask, shoe covers and gloves, that is fairly sufficient, but we suggest a complete PPE kit. Second area is the clean and the packing zone. This is one of the most important areas. This is where the heart of the autoclave and the heart of the CSSD, heart of the hospital lies. Whole of the packing is basically done in this area. It has to be a clean area, demarcated area where you need to have fresh linen. We advise generally, or rather it is advised that if you are using green linen, try ensuring that there are no holes inside that or no betadine spots or it has been bleached or dried properly. A uh, lot of indicators are used in this area, which we are going to take a look at. Sterilization indicators starting from type one to type six. A uh, couple of checklists are always used so that you know what instruments are being placed inside each and every pack. Safety protocols are adhered to. So, so you see this area, this packing area is very big. So this is for a bigger hospital. You can have a smaller hospital and smaller demarcated packing area also, where complete packing of drums and trays is going to take place. Items necessary over here, what, what is important is basically indicators and labels, which we are going to see. Precautions are not to use wood. Wood is generally going to absorb a lot of moisture, a lot of dirt. Cleaning of that is difficult in different crevices. So it is advisable if you have to do partitions for your CSSD, you can always use ACP puff panels. 
then is the sterile zone so once everything has been autoclaved inside an autoclave it comes out to the other area if you have a single door autoclave also it is not a problem you just need to take it to the sterile area and store it over there you see these are small racks which are given where you can properly store either your drums racks and everything uh for, see once the products are coming out of the autoclave they are quite hot and if you expose them immediately to a very cold area a lot of wet packs may be there or a lot of water droplets or moisture may come and if they come in contact with the solid shelves in that case condensation is going to happen so advisable is to have your racks which are perforated or wire mesh so that air circulation over here is good so if by chance after sterilizing the goods after storing them you find that some droplets have been there inside the water uh, droplets have been there inside the trays drums it is specifically called a wet pack and wet pack will happen when there is some problem either with your autoclave or your uh, environmental conditions you should ideally not use that pack it has to be reprocessed back uh, in the sterile area your temperature has to be controlled <clears throat> now i understand in smaller hospitals it is very tough to have a demarcated separate sterile storage area <clears throat> so what can be done is once the products are taken out of your autoclave you can always go and store them inside your operation theater itself that's a very good area that's a sterile area it is handled properly you are ensuring to keep it clean so you can always put items in proper racks over here and you can store them the temperature <clears throat> conditions required at this place is say around 18 to 24 degrees celsius and relative humidity is 30 to 60 this gets maintained if you have a hvac system already uh, storage space uh, you should avoid over stacking of the uh, material one top of the other and that would result again in a lot of condensation and try to put them a little away from the floor and the wall and the ceiling say around half a feet if it is possible that should be fine now <clears throat> sterilization when we are talking about it is basically a process where complete uh, pathogens that includes your virus fungi bacteria spores are going to get killed it is important to note what is the item which you can autoclave what is the item that you can disinfect what is the item that you can take inside a eto so several years back spalding was a scientist who had actually made a classification of all the instruments that you use inside a hospital into three particular conditions one being a critical one so any surgical instrument whether it is a metal instruments or any instruments which is basically touching your vascular tissue or open wounds that is considered a critical instrument your artery forceps needle holders any type of instruments that uh, rajendra sir was talking about inside uh, in his presentation all of them are basically critical instruments so for example any critical instrument like a needle holder has to go a process of sterilization that is inside an autoclave or an eto or a plasma semi critical items are those which are only going to touch uh, your mucous membranes or your intact skin so for example a couple of endoscopes laryngoscopes these will fall under semi critical uh, items these also should be sterilized by heat or eto but just in case if these items are heat uh, sensitive then they can have a high level disinfection so inside your hospital you are already using a couple of high level disinfectants for example if you are using a gluter aldehyde or uh, a common name for that is either bacillosid bacillosid special these items are basically high level disinfectants which with proper contact time are going to give you a good disinfection so basically there is a difference between sterilization and disinfection sterilization will ensure that even the spores are killed in disinfection bacteria can get killed there are chances that spores may not get killed so ideal is to get everything autoclaved or eto if they are heat sensitive they can go through a cycle of eto or high level disinfectant then there are non critical items uh, anything like cuff or anything which is getting touched with your intact skin something which is not getting to open wounds these are all non critical items for this a low level disinfectant should be fine so now there always needs to be a barrier between two patients if you are using a particular product between two patients there has to be a barrier a physical barrier that gets created by usage of disinfectant sterilization uh, several times we see that a normal bp cuff also which is being used on a patient gets used on a second patient now we know that indians have very good immunity and maybe it will not have a problem 
ideal always is to still use a low level detergent for that uh, i understand it is very time consuming for your staff for doing this for say for bed pans or urinals also if they are not being washed properly they can lead to a lot of infection our request is that whatever is the product you have to decide and place them under these three things and then use the specific sterilization method so in case inside your ot if you have a dropped needle holder if, <clears throat> by mistake if you drop a needle holder inside the ot you cannot use and clean it with either a gauze piece or spirit or any of these things it is a critical instrument it has to undergo a cycle of sterilization only there are several cases where any of the one instruments get dropped inside a ot it is either cleaned uh by spirit or some kind of a aldehyde and then it is used on a patient which is a little difficult it is not right it has to undergo a cycle of sterilization only so in this case you can always have a couple of spare items which can be etoed on autoclave kept for such kind of spare usages if it has a fall or there is something called a rapid sterilization a uh, flash cycle which is used which will uh, which will come ahead now sterilization choosing the right one based on heat sensitivity important is moist heat which is basically called uh, autoclaving cycle it works at a temperature of 110 and 135 degrees celsius this is the temperature at which plastics will probably melt and that is why heat sensitive instruments are taken into eto ethylene oxide which works at 30 to 70 degrees celsius only inside an eto <clears throat> any item can be sterilized absolutely no problem is there only thing you have to take care is linen ideally should not go inside an eto rest everything can be sterilized inside an eto but why is it not uh, used uh, quite well or rather uh, uh, in abundance is because the cycle time of an eto is approximately 6 to 8 hours that is too much of a time and autoclaving happens within an hour time at max so that's why there are cases for use of eto for all your plastic items silicon items uh, or for your cameras so you always should ideally refer to the ifu of a manufacturer for a drill uh, for robotic systems they will always have specifically mentioned whether you should be using hydrogen peroxide eto or uh, autoclave cycles move ahead <clears throat> we are talking about sterilization over here now uh, is your machine generating steam or only attaining temperature important part is autoclave works on the principle of steam just like a pressure cooker steam heat does not have any role to play only when you heat the water steam is going to get generated that steam has the killing action that's why when you have any kind of a virus or anything <clears throat> at your home you are going to take steam you are not going to sit in a place which is hot steam is going to ensure that killing of spores and bacteria happens reasonably well and that is why it is important that your autoclave should be giving steam now uh, is there any question uh, as of now or any explanation if i am going too fast you can just tell me right now siddharth if <laughs> siddharth if i can ask you one question yeah you you said for linen eto yes. is no no may i have a reason for that so what happens is eto is ethylene oxide where ethylene gas is extremely porous it actually penetrates through any kind of a uh, say if you have plastics it can penetrate through plastics also it will not penetrate through metal ETO has a property of staying wherever it has been sterilized. It is very difficult to aerate the ETO out from any of the locations. If you are okay. using porous material like uh, linen for matter, linen is going to absorb your ETO extremely well, and aeration cycles may may not be sufficient for your ETO. So, if you have a sterilization of three hours, the aeration cycle may be three hours or four hours. that four hours may not be sufficient to take out eto from each of the specific pores of the linen that is why it is advised not to use them good good it is dangerous <clears throat> since it is a dangerous gas it is dangerous any dangerous other question no. yeah no. Uh, also importantly uh, see in surveillance in india is anyways very difficult and in cssd it is all the more difficult there are very few tests to ascertain whether eto gas which has actually penetrated any of your instruments whether it has got completely removed or is there any residue of eo remaining inside the product the only way to test is in nabl labs where they have to take a culture do a lot of things and those kind of residue tests are never performed over so it is okay. always better to be safe okay. any questions from any other uh, delegate so far <laughs> uh, i have got a question, got a question. Got to ask. Got to ask. yeah go ahead 
uh, how do we how do you use sterilize the marker pens which we utilize for marking an incision sir skin marker pens generally ETO. already come sterilized via eto or by gamma radiation there are two things we have seen so there are a couple of manufacturers and they are supposed to be single use only sir to be very honest uh, once you have used such kind of ink on a patient on a patient's body ideally it should not be used on a second patient and uh, honestly the skin markers today available in the market are say around 30 or 35 rupees only mostly uh, pretty cheap they come with a ruler they come pre sterilized only sterilizing it later could be difficult proposition because any see autoclave moist heat is going to interfere with the ink so that is why it is never autoclave either it is gamma radiated or it is going to be eto sterilized our suggestion is to use single use one sir yeah so that so that uh, absolutely well said however in india with res resource poor situation or resource surplus situation we right. quite often try to use certain things which are again used correct i know sir so uh, as i understand sir if there are expensive devices obviously a sud which we call single use device has to be reused to bring in some good economics into picture okay. because not many being patients are there but for items which are fairly reasonable in cost say around 30 35 50 rupees i think yes. it is better that we can have a single use device i completely agree when it comes to any other things like meshes jugs or for that matter ventilator circuits also you should have a reusable policy so it okay. is not that somebody has to sit in and do a policy simple thing you have a product you should know that the functionality of the product remains for two or three cycles mark on the product how many times you have used it say catheter one time two time three times after the third time reuse has been done it should be thrown away so okay. for thus cases economics will actually work out very well okay okay please proceed sure so sterilization uh, yeah sorry one one more question yes sir uh what is your opinion regarding the uh, nitin nitin vaporizer? nitin please vaporizer. use only one device nitin i will nitin i presume you are using uh once again sir which device formalizer for, formalin vaporizer formalin vaporizer yes so formalin chambers were generally used prior to eto being in place and commercially available because it was a good method for sterilizing any of the urology items and the penetration properties of a formalin tablet inside a formalin chamber are very good, no doubt but sir formalin is an irritant now and you have better uh, technologies now available such as eto or plasma for that matter which may find to be a little costlier but most of the hospitals have adopted using an eto instead of using a formalin sterilizer it is all right sir there are a couple of items there if you if you are sure that it is not going to interfere with the patient for example the formalin sterilization has been done you keep the product quarantined for a while and then use it on the patient it is going to be fine no problem but there has to be no cracks or leaks on the acrylic chamber there has to be the formalin tablet has to be good condition i mean good product uh, and you cannot load the formalin chamber with lot of products only a few which is given on the trays if you have three trays load the products so that it has good opening so that the vapors can go here and there okay so sterilization i would still recommend sir eto has been uh, economic it has become economical now quite economical yeah. yes yeah. please proceed sir right sir so now sterilization if it is not done properly it may result in a lot of problems such as wet packs if your autoclave is not performing well it is going to result in all these problems which is insufficient drying the indicators will be failing uh, the manual cycles or in manual autoclaves are inconsistent it depends upon the person class 2 class 3 class 4 worker that you have who is handling the autoclave it depends on his whims whether it is going to run for 30 minutes or 50 minutes or 60 minutes so to have a consistent cycle it is always good to upgrade to a good uh, fully automatic autoclave now you see these are vertical autoclaves which are used previously some of the places it is going to be used today also there is no external vacuum pump which is going to aid in drying or creating a good vacuum so basically air and steam work in opposite ways where there is air there is going to be no steam where there is steam there is going to be no air so for ensuring that sterilization has to be proper you need to have steam not air air has to be completely removed from the chamber from an inside vertical autoclave how will you remove the air if there are air pockets this place is not going to get sterilized 
you have no assurance about that so these are the other sterilizers which are a little recent one but these are without the external vacuum pumps again over here it is called a gravity displacement sterilizer where steam is going to come from the top air is going to get removed from bottom there is no external vacuum pump to remove the air what will happen is as much steam as you put inside air is going to move out here also a lot of air pockets may be there these are the places where the indicators may fail or the sterilization may be improper so sooner or later a lot of wet packs come into play this i am sure most of the people would have already seen and at least in orthopedics this is quite uh, evident because you have packs which are very very large in size and very bulky so if you are having an implant tray which has 20 25 instruments along with the implants it is very very heavy package and that may also result in a lot of wet packs so how do you identify a wet pack there are two ways first thing is where you see that once the product has come out of the autoclave you see that droplets of water are uh, on the linen or either on the sms wraps if you are using the disposable ones that is one way to identify that there is a wet pack actually if you are using a linen a linen if you are using a linen to uh, wrap a tray linen is going to absorb quite a lot of water you will not be able to find out whether there is a wet pack or not however if you use the sms wraps which are disposable ones these do not absorb water they have a tendency of showing you that there is a wet pack so if you want to test the performance of your autoclave have a small tray made of linen have a small tray made of sms disposable wraps try putting them inside the autoclaving running the full cycle after 100% drying cycle is complete if you still have water on top that means there is some problem this is we are talking about products which are there water droplets which are there on the top now you may also have water droplets inside or you may have your linen or gown which is uh, evidently moist or very very uh, wet inside those are called actual wet packs which should never be used if water has been able to seep from top to bottom inside that means wicking would have happened wicking means that lot of organisms and pathogens along with the water has come inside your tray and that's a big challenge so identifying the wet packs is important a lot of reasons are there why wet pack happens if you have a excess weight of the tray which you are packing more than 12 kg it is going to result in definite uh, definite moisture which is going to come in stacking of the loads if you can see over here it has been extremely loaded there is no space for steam or air or anything to move properly this may also result in uh, wet pack after your auto cleaning is done you have to provide a 10 15 minutes cool off period do not take it out immediately from your auto cleave let it be placed inside your auto cleave for 5 10 minutes take it out keep it at room temperature and then shift it out to your ot because your ot is going to be considerably cooler as compared to your auto cleaving area a difference in temperature is also going to bring a lot of moisture and condensation this could also mean if there is a wet pack it could also mean that your cycle parameters of the autoclave are not correct that means that the drying is not proper so that's why a vacuum cap capability of the autoclave has to be good if that is a the case then definitely your autoclave is going to perform well so this is a sort of uh, fully automatic high pressure high vacuum plc based printer autoclave that you see i understand that CSSD is a drain on your money. It is not a billable activity. It takes a lot of you know efforts to actually build uh, build in a very good CSSD. Sooner or later, just the way that you are progressing with your drills, with your robotic systems, your CSSD should also get an update with a good autoclave. It needs to have a pre vacuum, fully automatic HMC uh, uh, PLC based autoclave with columns along with the printer. Your print is going to ensure that you know. that the person who has done the auto cleaving the cycle was complete and it was consistent an external vacuum pump like this is going to ensure that the complete air gets removed drying is proper so that you do not have wet packs uh we were talking about flash sterilization so just in case if you have an instrument which gets dropped inside the ot what do you do you cannot run to the cssd and wait for one hour once the patient is open so that's why it is important that you should always maintain emergency instruments in medical grade pouches pouches such as these you can autoclave in this the autoclaving cycle over here the expiry of this goods is going to be 3 months so if you autoclave something inside a drum the validity of that may remain about 3 or 4 days if you autoclave inside a tray with a sms wrap it could be 15 days or 30 days if you autoclave a product inside the eto reel 
then this will remain valid for at least three months. So just in case, if you drop any of the instrument, you can always open this one single instrument and use it inside the OT. There is also something called a flash sterilizer, which is used. This is kept inside the OT for those dropped instruments. So you have an instrument, you get it dropped. It gets dropped. Sorry. You pick it up, place it inside a flash autoclave, run it as it is. You do not need to pack anything. Run it inside a 134 degree size, uh, cycle for 15 or 20 minutes. It will be out. It will be wet, but it will be good to use. It can be used directly. Implants, just in case, if you're thinking the implants cannot be flash sterilized at all, none of the implants, they have to do a regular cycle only. And flash cycles are not a replacement for a general sterilization. These are required only for emergency purposes. All right. We come to ATO. Yes, sir. Sorry. Perfect. Anything? Right. No, absolutely so, perfect. Okay. ETO is uh, ethylene oxide. Ethylene oxide is a very one question is there. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yes, regarding sir. the uh, regarding the flash sterilization, yes. how to pick up or how to uh, catch hold of that instrument from that uh, sterilizer to the OT OT instrument trolley? That's how a very to pick good up question, that sir. And, uh, very good that question. To the trolley? So in that case, uh, if an instrument gets uh, dropped. The first thing is you will have to get it picked either by any sister in charge who's there, who's wearing fresh gloves. She has to pick it up. It has to be washed first without a doubt. Even if it is falling inside the OT, it has to go and undergo a wash cycle. So that just in case if there was any evident dirt over there, it gets washed up. It can be picked by one of the instruments like a Cheetal forcep. Now I wouldn't suggest using a Cheetal forcep generally because Cheetal is also outdated, but you can always inside whatever pack you are using for TKR, THR, you can have one cheetal which is also placed inside always in that tray so that if there is such kind of a case, that cheetal can be used to pick up that particular instrument and then it can be washed. Okay. Right. Okay. Please right. Please. So ETU sterilization now it for heat sensitive instrument, this works at say around uh, 30 to 70 degrees Celsius. Most of the plastic silicon or any kind of PVC instrument or a uh, medical device is not going to get melted inside an ETU. This is a very good option. It is a very carcinogenic gas. So you have to take extreme amount of care when you're using an ETO. Now in India, we are we think all of these safety measures to be pretty trivial. We are not very in, um, very much into this, you know, uh, ensuring that you are wearing a ETO ka mask, ETO ka alarms, all these things are not there. Still, a few things which are important is uh, if you have an ETO inside your hospital, it should have a vent pipe, which is going to go 10 feet above the highest point on your terrace. That means when the EO gas is getting exhausted, it has to go in the atmosphere. It it cannot land at any place inside your OT area or your CSSD area. The whole of the vent has to be taken to highest point 10 feet above the terrace and then it can be dissipated off in the atmosphere. That is one important part. Second part is whenever ETO is being used, it has to be used by a trained person just in case if they land up opening the door when the cycle is on, EO gas is going to escape out. Now, Surveillance has not been done so far in past 20 years also as to how EO is going to affect your, uh, particularly your body. But there are certain cases where cancer has been seen very well, where the ETO was being used and where safety concerns and safety protocols were not in place. We have to ensure that all safety protocols are in place and ETO is a fantastic device to use. Any product can go inside an ETO, including your scissors, your sharp scissors. So just in case if you have had problems where your very sharp and good super cut scissors were getting blunt for some reason, you're not able to understand why. One of the reasons could be that repeated autoclaving cycles at 134 degrees Celsius may uh, make you know the serrations and the lower blade serrations of your super cut scissors extremely weak. So one good option is to place it inside a ETU. Heat is not going to affect it and that's why the sterilization also is going to be proper. Also, since they are very expensive instruments, if you have very expensive instruments and if you place it inside the same tray itself, it may get damaged because of the moving. So such kind of instruments you can always place inside a packet inside an ETO and sterilize it separately. Now, <clears throat> ETO important whenever you're choosing to buy an ETO, there are two, three things that I would like to say. First thing, if somebody says that my cycle time is only six hours, you cannot become happy that six hours is good time. No, out of six hours, ideally aeration itself happens for four or five hours. 
sterilization happens for 3 hours so minimum cycle time in an etu cannot be less than 8 hours it has to be 8 hours for sure it is only companies like 3m or steris or getting a who are very costly people only those are going to have extremely good uh, type of a vacuum pump which is very very efficient in its performance that you can get a cycle in 6 hours all the indian etos your cycle time needs to be 8 hours very minimum if you do not have that cycle time today you should get in touch with your manufacturer tell him that the aeration time should ideally increase we have had cases in nagpur in few places where we have observed that infection in the patients has risen considerably because the cycle time of that etu was less we correlated how that is because aeration was not proper eo residue was getting left at some of the locations in some of the instruments and those instruments were going inside a patient's body that is one area where surveillance is very tough but because of that infections could arise uh, eto if you are packing it inside a sterilization wheel the shelf life can be one year depending how and where you are storing it and also if you are trying to uh, <clears throat> seal the eto reel it has to be done with a, at least an 8 mm sealing width it cannot be done with one or two mm sealing width that is you cannot use a sealer which is used for packaging in a food, uh, food industry if you have seen the food people is going to pack with the simple sealer that is not the right one because the uh, coils of the sealer may be uh, may not be in the perfect conditions where there may be small openings you will not even know that eto inside when it has got the packet when it has gone inside the eto it is going to go through a cycle of aeration sterilization vacuuming and at that time the packets may get opened also and there is no point of actually using those kind of conditions so your sealing machine has to be a good sealing machine a medical grade one uh before you place anything inside an eto machine you have to ensure that it should be extremely dry if there is any water which gets remain droplets of water if they remain inside your instrument that will lead to oxidation process that may also lead to lot of uh, infections in the patients oxidation corrosion lot of things may happen so it has to be completely clean so how do you clean these as rajendra sir had told use a simple air gun which is good enough for washing and going through all your catheters for removing the excess droplets of water also your eto has to be placed inside a separate chamber nabh demands that your eto should be placed inside a separate chamber so that just in case if there is an episode of gas leak it is not going to interfere with the person who is generally inside a cst <clears throat> what can be sterilized in eto as we told anything can be sterilized inside an eto only thing is a single use device in case if you are using a single use device like a catheter and if you are trying to use it ensure that you are always having markings where you know how many times you have reused the device a certain safe time there is no benchmark uh, for this but basically it is with your practice you would know that a particular product functionality is working well only two or three times when it is being used the fourth time it is not going to be used so you can mark it on the catheters like this after the fourth use you can discard it uh future developments in sterilization are low temperature plasma machine now plasma machines are basically an ionized gas which is given with a hydrogen peroxide the cycle time is only 45 to 75 minutes as compared to an eto and plasma machines are pretty expensive but now slowly they are getting commercialized and they are getting cheaper uh, these are very good machines because there is no toxic residue of these machines nothing it's toxic and anything can go inside including including your drills your instruments everything so in case there is a, a literal <coughs> uh trade off that you have to do between keeping two sets for two surgeries to be performed within 2 hours or 3 hours of time or using a plasma machine so that the same set of instruments can be sterilized immediately and used within an hour's time on a second patient the price ranges of these are approximately 15 to 22 lakhs approximately <clears throat> uh rajendra sir how much time do we have i'm so sorry If so let us have one or two questions. Okay. Yeah. So that we get the be there. Ah, uh, which is the best method to sterilize the uh, rubber tourniquets, which are wrapped around each other? Uh, does the autoclaving should reach the central part? Which of tourniquet cuffs, right? We are talking about the rubber uh, tourniquet cuffs. cuffs, sir. There are uh. if if you have a silicon tourniquet cuff that is autoclavable. 
if you do have a rubber tunicate cuff that is ideally not autoclavable but what you can do is still if you want to sterilize it it can be done inside an eto machine only thing we have to ensure is that the aeration time of that eto machine should be good so that no residue gets left inside the cuff only silicon tunicate cuffs are basically autoclavable that is what they mention on the ifu also rubber ones ideally are sir, not autoclavable sooner or later the rubber is going to break off from there or chip off from those locations chandak sir yeah nikhil sir go ahead. yeah metronics uh, has supplied that uh, strike tunica set so whether that is autoclavable or we should eto the it we are using after eto so they are they are they are silicon ones and they can be autoclavable so what is better uh, we got a eto machine also so what is better so i i, I think uh, everyday use no we use it only when it's very necessary if you are doing a wrist you don't need a, a, a style to it for your circumstances i think eto would be best yeah so eto is available yeah yeah so eto is best eto. okay thank you yeah so what is the general consensus you would like uh, siddharth to continue for uh, sterilization indicators indicators oh, yes, yes 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 okay. sir yes Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. All right. That so is very now, useful. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, it has only been six to seven years since the time NABH has come into play that now the indicators are getting a lot of uh, traction, or at least for that matter, they are being used uh, uh, quite well in the hospitals. And it's a good thing because we are going to give you a very good indication of whether your sterilization parameters were okay. So now, important being, if your indicator is failing. just in case if there is a failure of the indicators is that a good sign or a bad sign i would say if your indicator actually fails it's a very good thing you come to know there is some problem with your autoclave just in case if you try to use indicators which are easier to pass the other way round that your machine is able to pass an indicator that's why you choose that indicator instead of making the machine pass the most challenging indicator the trade off comes over here you should use the most challenging indicators which are difficult to pass so that your machine's performance at a optimum level if it is able to pass those indicators in that case the lower level pathogens such as viral fungi or all these things are going to be cleared off easily so now there are several indicators they start from type 1 to type 6 there is no good or bad indicator in this all of them have a separate role to play we'll just go through them important for chemical indicator so there are indicators are divided into two parts one being a chemical indicator the other one being a biological indicator both the indicators have to be used together there is nothing like you have to use one chemical or one biological all of them have to be used properly for a certain specific purpose uh the chemical indicators should be kept at the worst location in a tray or a drum where it is very difficult for steam to reach a location that is the place where you should be placing your indicator not at the top of your pack not when you open the pack you should not find that the indicator is right at the top because steam will penetrate that area easily the difficult part is you have to place it inside below all the instruments so that you know that even if you have a gauze piece which was kept at a certain location which was distant the gauze piece has got properly sterilized <clears throat> there are several types of indicators that we talk about first is type 1 type 1 indicator is basically called a process indicator i am sure all the uh, hospitals and doctors are aware about this indicator where the color changes from white to black or from green to black now this is basically colloquially called a, a signal lock or an autoclave tape this autoclave tape's purpose is only for documentation so you are going to place you are currently placing these indicators only at the top of your tray if i am not wrong it is going to come at the top of the tray or top of the drum so now if you tell me that is if your indicator has passed that means the color has changed from white to black what would you say whether it is sterilized or not it is my question whether it is sterilized or no, not no it is not sterilized it is sterilized no it is not sterilized it has gone into its autoclave exactly yeah very right sir it doesn't exactly. suggest that it is sterilized absolutely sir so it is only a process indicator meaning that it has gone through a cycle of autoclaving it has come out that's it it doesn't mean that it is sterilized because this indicator is being placed on the top 
what you have to find is the indicators which are being placed inside the drum inside the tray whether they are going to pass or not if they pass that means the sterilization was okay so your eto gas tape your uh, steam indicator tape your three line labels these are three line labels which are used along with the labeling gun this helps in maintaining a batch process that means each and every tray or drum is going to be pasted with this particular indicator this has a class 1 indicator meaning this color of green uh, color of purple is going to change into green once the processing of the cycle has happened and this is going to go on each and every drum like this it is pasted on each and every drum and tray this finally the end use of this is that once you have autoclaved you have taken out a product you have used it on a patient for example a tkr patient is there you have used five trays in a tkr patient all the five stickers on these trays are going to go on the patient file or your particular medical record file knowing that you have used five different trays on one particular patient whose batch and process was this so it has details of batch machine number uh, when it was sterilized who has done it the date of sterilization and the date of expiry all these things are properly mentioned so you have a complete tracking on how and what a patient was used just why this is important is because say 2 months from now if a patient comes back to you saying that you he has infection and if he was placed with an implant so they are very difficult to identify what is the reason for that infection sterilization could be one of the parameters there could be other parameters also if you have this patient record saying that you had sterilized this properly you had pasted this on a patient you have a legal record mentioning that your sterilization was proper because this is going to get correlated with a lot of other indicators inside your cssd this is called batch monitoring this is basically for traceability and recall so in case if you have any problems which has happened inside your cssd where a biological indicator has failed a chemical indicator has failed today we may not be doing a lot of things for that but it is supposed to be there is supposed to be something called a recall policy in a hospital where all the particular products which did not get sterilized properly have to be recalled back inside a cssd they have to be re-sterilized and then distributed between that you have to identify why that the indicator has failed whether it is because of machine whether it is because of packing uh, this is type 1 indicator whatever you have on eto wheel also these are also type 1 indicators so again this is not going to tell you whether anything placed inside an eto in a sterile uh, wheel whether it is sterilized or not it only means that it is processed for sterilization there are other indicators for eto also we move ahead type 2 indicator is called a bovie dick test if this is a very important test which is existing in most of the hospitals if you have a vacuum pump inside your autoclave if you have a pre vacuum autoclave then a bovie dick test is mandatory if nabh assessor comes to you telling that you are bovie dick nahi karte ho and if you have a vertical autoclave or if you have a gravity displacement sterilizer which does not have a vacuum pump bovie dick is never mandatory in that assessor may not be aware of this but bovie dick is mandatory according to cdc guidelines according to en285 only when you have a pre vacuum sterilizer which has an external vacuum vacuum pump so if you have a vertical autoclave that's why we are saying that it is an important part to upgrade your autoclave to a pre vacuum autoclave so that these tests are going to pass so what is a bovie dick test it is basically an air removal test if you recall we had talked that air and steam are enemies of each other if there is air steam will not penetrate that's why you need to remove air completely from a pack from an autoclave from a drum and for that how do you do that it is tested with a bovie dick test which comes in three different area uh, different uh, ways one is a a4 sheet this is a old technology where a4 sheet as uh, was used a 4 kg linen was placed above this 4 kg linen was placed below this this a complete pack is made this is placed inside an autoclave in an empty load bovie dick is always done in an empty load in the morning you run the cycle as it is you take it out and you see whether the color has changed if the color has changed from yellow to black completely that means air has got removed from all the areas so how this is simulating is basically imagine this is a tray inside a tray you have placed gauze piece over here you have placed lot of instruments langen back retractors and everything on the sides now when you are placing this inside an autoclave the autoclaving sterilization has to happen to this area also sorry this area all the areas once the autoclaving is done 
say consider this is what we are talking about a tray and once the auto claiming is done you find that areas over here for a bovidic test were not passed they were still yellow condition is from yellow to black if yellow spots remain that means sterilization has not properly happened at this area that means there was an air pocket at this area air hasn't got completely removed so if you had placed a gauze piece in the middle you had placed langenbach retractors over here the langenbach retractors have passed that means they have got auto clip but the gauze piece had not got sterilized so very important test this is called a bovidic test it comes as a a4 sheet it is comes as a small test pack and it comes as a helix device this is a very challenging device where a 4 meter long lumen is placed along with an indicator the whole of lumen has to get passed that means the air has to get completely removed from this lumen and then steam is going to penetrate inside it is like a tube hollow tube so if you have a cardiac setup if you have a neuro setup if you have small lumen devices like suction catheters or suction cannulas yanthior cannulas and all these things in that case it is always good to use this challenging device so that means that complete air is going to get removed from this and then steam is going to penetrate inside so it identifies the air pockets it also the bovidic identifies whether the vacuum pump is performing well it also identifies whether there are any leaks in the pipes and the valves if that is a case the bovidic is going to be fail we need to stop the machine identify what is the problem and then take the next corrective action then is a type 4 indicator type 3 indicator is basically a single variable indicator which is not generally used nowadays a type 4 chemical indicator is one which is called a multi variable one it comes in different conditions it is there for steam also it is there for auto also auto clip also basically two or more critical variables need to be satisfied for this indicator to pass temperature time and steam now out of this if temperature and time conditions are met at a satisfactory level in that case the color of the indicator will change so originally if the color was purple it will change to complete green this is a particular indicator which is used inside the trays and the drums so it is not pasted outside it is placed inside the tray nabh uh, cdc all of them specifically mentioned that if you are putting 10 trays inside an autoclave or 5 or 10 drums inside an autoclave each of the drum and the tray should have a type 6 or a type 4 indicator inside now again in india the economics will not allow you economics are going to be difficult each of the indicator may be costing 5 or 10 rupees it is around 50 rupees if you are putting in a cycle so what we suggest as a different method is at least your most critical trays inside the ot or uh, tracheostomy trays these trays you should ideally be using a type 4 indicator inside each and every tray and the rest of the trays you can probably be a sh little surety can be there that if these have passed in some of the trays the other trays will also pass so type 4 indicator come for steam also eto also and two or more critical variables need to be identified for this to pass this works at 3 and 1/2 minutes for 134 degrees 121 for 15 minutes so siddhar yes sir just enumerate type 1 indicator is only telling you about temperature or being kept in the autoclave yes yes Uh, not even temperature sir it is just telling you that something has actually gone a process gone into or a process that's it it has that gone in come out it has gone and some heat has applied to that indicator probably yes right yes type type 2 is basically a bovidic which is bovidic. air removal test specifically if you have a pre vacuum at a pre vacuum autoclave this test should be performed ideally daily if daily is again a challenge because of economics you can try to do it once in 3 days Okay. even if that forms as a challenge at least once a week is mandatorily required or okay. if your autoclaves undergoes any cycle of maintenance or any service bovidic should be performed on it so that your sorry it's okay yeah, no, got it got it absolutely fine right oh, and type the three, type 4 uh, type 3 is single variable which is not generally used sir not used okay no. So type four is chemical indicator. Now. Chemical indicators again. Type four also is basically a multi-variable indicator. So if temperature, time, steam, any of these two variables are actually working out well, this indicator will pass. It okay. is a it, it is a fairly economical indicator as compared to a type five or a type six indicators, which are more expensive. So okay. that's why 
what has happened nowadays is people are using type 4 indicators in almost all the trays a few of the trays are with type 6 indicators that is how averaging of the cost actually happens okay see there okay. are some places where if you have if if you are if you are in a big multi speciality hospital and if there are different consultants the consultants would want that when they open a tray in front of them they should find one indicator at least so that they are assured that the csd person has worked so in that case if each and every tray type 6 indicator may be 10 to 15 rupees which may become very costly so you can try to put a type 4 indicator along with that okay perfect so that if i can ask you yes yes sir majority of the people in a nursing home yeah the indicator which take those two drugs you know i think the average type which is there all this all this indicators which you are mentioning yeah applicable to those basic sterilizers which large majority of the nursing homes use it good question sir sir uh, basically now the sterilization remains the same that is either an item is sterile or it is unsterile there is nothing called partially sterile even if you are using a small autoclave which is a small vertical autoclave also it has to make the thing sterile irrespective there can be no partial sterile or full sterile now those vertical autoclaves i understand do not have a vacuum pump that is why it may be difficult to pass a couple of indicators however you should try at least passing a type 4 indicator because at least two variables if they are met it means you have some sanctity that the sterilization process was okay Okay. rather than having no indicator at all it is good to try using which of the indicators your autoclave may be able to pass we may not even have tried there are chances that some good sterilizers vertical ones the smaller ones they are able to pass a type 5 indicator also it happens even without the vacuum pump they are so good in quality the sterilization is so good the water quality is if you are using an ro or distilled water good conditions are met even a type 5 when a type 6 indicator gets passed it is that trying of that has to be done once and we are not saying that you should ideally try to use each and every get, uh, indicator in each and every drug economics has to work out i understand for smaller nursing homes also but it is good to have some sterilization assurance at the back of your mind okay yeah. i can ask you other question yes sir in better hospital or in 20 better hospital yes sir The space crunch which is there in those hospitals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is the ideal sterilizer an approximate cost for that? Uh, sir, uh, I mean there is again there is no benchmarking for this, but I would suggest I have worked with a lot of hospitals which are only twenty thirty bedded. Uh, instead of utilizing a billable space which is near to your OT, which can rather be used for recovery or for other things or ICU, we suggest. to you uh, completely move your cssd towards the terrace that is what most of the hospitals do so in terrace your local municipal corporations will allow you temporary structures terrace you will have lot of open space in that if you are able to have say around 6 feet by 10 feet or 6 feet by 6 feet area also at least two zones can be made a dirty zone where you are doing the washing and a packing zone where the autoclave is going to be placed you may not have a sterile zone over there you may not even meet with the conditions of actually having an air conditioner over there but those items which get sterilized can be removed from there placed inside your ot store which is okay but my request is if you have say around 6 feet to 7 feet of area a square area or 8 feet of area that can be divided very well into a small cssd or a small room where you have washing at one place and auto cleaning at the other coming back to your second one when you are asking for a sterilizer sir vertical sterilizers also come in the range of say say start from 20 30000 and range up till 1 and 1/2 lakhs so again a couple of them are going to have low water cutoffs couple of them are going to have a vacuum pump also couple of them are going to have for consistent results they will have a automatic system it may not be hmi or plc or touch screen but it will have a digital processor which will ensure that if you have set a cycle time of 35 minutes it will do 35 minutes of sterilization which is required it will not be lesser it will not be more these kind of sterilizers are also available in the range of 50000 to 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees and they those vertical sterilizers will fit in a very small area also so if you have it near to your ot it will fit in say 2 feet by 2 feet of area uh in continuation of sir's question uh in small nursing homes we still use the 
autoclavable drums yes. uh, over which the we open the flaps for the right. steam to enter inside yes sir. okay we usually don't fumigate the autoclave autoclave room main ot chamber ot room is fumigated Correct. and after we take out the uh, drum from that uh, outer uh, container right, we sir. have to close the flap over the holes absolutely get Correct. that small uh, period of um, I mean, I air contact with the insect is Correct, hazardous sir. to the uh, this thing. Uh, Very good question, sir. Very good question. So again, it would depend. So if you have an autoclave area which is very clean, which is where where there is not too much of movement of people, also where people are not having their lunch or dinner in that area, if that area remains sanctimonious, if it is a good area, then that short period of time that we are talking about is all fine. Five minutes or two minutes of time that you are talking about, it is good enough time, and nothing will happen to that. However, having said that, it is always recommended. That's why that first thing is uh, you should have the sterile area. That is, once you are taking out the goods, that area has to be very clean, and it has to be a good clean area where you have some good circulation of air. Also, uh, no eating habits or nothing should happen over there. Only for the purpose it is meant. And second things are slowly, slowly the drums are getting phased out. Even for smaller nursing homes, the idea is to uh, use smaller trays, the cheaper, reasonable trays, instead of going for bulky drums. Because I have personally seen that for uh, a certain size of drum is given, you want to place everything of one OT inside that drum. So to close that OT, you are sitting on the drum so that it closes. so once that is done that means it has been packed so much that there is no area for steam or air at all so that's why to avoid this it is good to have smaller trays normal trays also where you can pack it with different thing for linen you can have a separate pack but for smaller instruments you can have trays which are closed with linen a good fresh laundered linen and that is never a problem your linen you don't need to close flaps nothing with that linen in fact i have a slide in the front about what Uh, the problem that you talked about the drums i have a slide in the front but we may not have time to go through it uh, i'll still actually try to elaborate that ideally it is better to shift slowly to uh, trays instead of the drums that phasing out has to happen slowly slowly in most of the setup the washing is done in the inside the ot then yes. they send the uh, pack the instrument and send to the csl is it Correct. fine Yes, sir. I mean, till the time you are not using the same scrub station which are using for washing your hands, for washing the instruments, it is all fine. If you have a separate place where you are washing the instruments, separate. because it is separate. separate. Sorry, it is separate. It is separate from the. Then it is okay, sir. So what happens is, as soon as you take out the instruments, they are uh, drained with blood, pus, and everything. And it is important that your instruments should ideally stay wet till the time they are getting washed. if you have instruments which become very dry clotting of the blood is going to happen directly on the instruments it is going to lead to a lot of box joints problems where you see that the joints are actually difficult to open or for that matter you find that corrosion has happened on the instruments and you try blaming the manufacturers of the instruments instead it is basically the handling of the instruments which is important so as soon as you have used the instruments inside the ot try to dip it not into the saline water a regular water itself tap water itself it has to be dipped inside that take it out clean it at the area that you have designed designated for if it's a scrub area is different and if your ot area where you are washing the instruments properly it is all fine it should just be a little deep 12 inches or so so that there is no splash back of the water once it is getting washed and from there you can always pack it and then send it across to your csl it is all fine there is no problem at all protocols have to be followed because once you are cleaning these instruments you need to have an enzyme solution if you are having those enzyme solutions in place we are dipping inside the water your staff is taking the efforts to put 20 minutes into that uh, trying to wash it with uh, proper brushes it is all fine what we uh, see is because of the load in the hospitals the ot staff is so overloaded that they may over they may not do this they may skip the procedure they may not do this cleaning that is why it is better that one cssd person who who is experienced about all these things who has the time to all these things should do all these things and the ot staff should remain confined to their ot jobs okay sandeep wants to ask some question yes sandeep go ahead suppose uh, we have done a infected case where yes. we have used the gowns uh, the sheets the towel yes and uh, uh, you know they are washed in a common pool hmm 
like uh, in the other theaters, the gowns and sheets and all the linen is used, yes. and it is sent to a common uh, uh, washing platform. Yeah, CSSD. Right. So, uh, uh, what is the risk of eliminating all the bacteria, all the viruses in that linen or the instruments? Mm. You know, like howsoever we clean by jet spray or whatever may be, <clears throat> there will be still residue bacteria in the linen or in the instruments. Right, sir. So, uh, what should we do to ensure that no bacteria or no viruses are there in the linen or the instruments? Should sir, we you may not please... like my suggestion if I say so. For an infected patient, please try to use as many disposables as possible. Yeah, but it is not practical. No? I know. I, it is I, not I practical. Know. You cannot throw the instruments. Yeah, no, instruments, no. Certainly not, sir. So, for instruments... So, suppose there is a cannulated instrument which we correct. have used. Correct, correct, correct. correct. Right, so, so if we uh, do a double cycle or, uh, you know, it is, uh, these indicators are fair enough to eliminate all the infection. Yes, sir. So, uh, I'll start by saying, sir, that <clears throat> important part, I had a slide which I actually removed from here that double sterilization is a myth. Sterilizing twice is only going to put pressure and burden on your electrical supplies, water and everything. You do one sterilization with proper indicators, that is absolutely enough. These indicators basically are simple uh, chemical indicator strips, which are pretty accurate. <clears throat> the problem lies with the machines. Indicator may fail if there is some problem with the machine. Indicators generally are not bad. So if you have a sterilization indicator which has passed after a complete cycle, that means the sterilization was proper, you have assurance. To ensure a double step of sterilization, you can try to ensure that the cleaning and the disinfection part is good for those infected patients. That is where your question is coming in. It's the right question. I would suggest, sir, if uh, immediately uh, once the instruments are coming out of your infected OT, try to wash it in a separate area, <clears throat> ideally designated area. If you have a CSSD also, CSSD person will be able to handle that. Uh, generally, those instruments are taken inside a separate bath. You put an enzyme solution in that, a, a new fresh enzyme solution specifically. Uh, the first thing, actually first part is rundown wash. Basically tap water is open, put all the instruments inside, let the water get clean. So your blood serum and bigger particles actually get removed. The second part is taking them and putting it and immersing inside a enzyme solution. That enzyme solution should be discarded immediately after the use on the, uh, on the uh, instruments for this infected patient. So there is a tendency to reuse the enzyme solutions for second set, but if it's an infected patient, you should discard it. After that, the uh, precaution that has to be taken inside a uh, CSSD is he has to wear a PPE kit because the cleaning cycle is not yet complete. When it comes to drying, you have to dry it with a dry air gun. That is all fine. A double drying should be done if that actually permits, not just with an air gun, but also with a, if you have a hair dryer, that is fairly good for putting some hot air and that is going to ensure that excess droplets are going to get absorbed. Now the sheet on which you had kept the instruments that should also get discarded because that is going to absorb a lot of moisture that is going to absorb a lot of uh, chemicals that have come in and that has to be washed off. After that, you have to place it inside an autoclave and let it go a normal cycle. Absolutely not a problem. If your sterilization autoclave was proper, the sterilization of the things will come out to be proper. When it comes to linen, infected linen, there are pH, there is, uh, nowadays there are molecules like polyhexamethylene bigonite, PHMB. These molecules are a quaternary ammonium compound and they are probably third or fourth generation. They are very good for disinfecting infected patients, blood or for that matter, serum. So you can dip, if you are doing a bleaching of the linen, it is going to tear it up. Instead, use these kind of solutions for dipping it inside. And that will also ensure that any kind of an infected patient's linen gets disinfected properly. Thereafter, it can go a normal course of sterilization cycle. So I, I think, Sanjit, that is a better procedure where we dip into either linotox or something like Linosafe, linotox, yes. Correct. Yes. Exactly. That is PHMB, polyhexamethylene bike. Yes. Cotton See, yes, sir. Now 10 o'clock and I, I see still about you have got 20, 20, 25 slides more. Yes. I, we'll stop it, sir. No issues. I, if I may, I may 
next Thursday at eight o'clock. Right, sir. Okay. So, Siddhar, the remaining slides are really very interesting. So, we request you to take up the next Thursday at eight o'clock. All right, sir. That should be okay. We'll do that, sir. I think that Thank will be fine. Thank you very much because I think there is a there is a small limit which everybody can absorb. I understand. <laughs> and it is already ten o'clock. Also, I understand. Yes, sir. And even Siddharth is tired because he had a voice rest to his throat uh, uh, box because That's he had right. a he had a, he had a uh, throat pain. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And then, then Dr. Sangeet. Sangeet has been postponed twice. Okay. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Siddharth. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Siddharth. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Thank sir. You. Nitin, bye bye. Sangeet, next time. So, end of today's session? Yes, end of today's session. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for Dr. Sangeet to continue. Okay. No, Sangeet is coming next week. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Nice, wonderful session today. Yeah, thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Arthur Devi, you can close this uh, today. Oof. <sighs>